Hello everyone, welcome to Real Wicked Talk, I'm James Ogden. Um, today I'm going to be reshooting this video that I tried to live stream, but the connection wasn't very good, so we ended up with kind of some wonky video, and parts were omitted from the information that I was trying to present, uh, unacceptable. So, I'm going to go ahead and redo this. Uh, this is an idea that came to me, oddly enough, when I posted a dope meme on Facebook, and it was about the ladder to heaven, which I know some of you saw, and uh, that's some kind of childish humor probably, but whatever, we all got to laugh out of it. Uh, <laughs> um, oddly enough, though, it got me thinking about, uh, what is the ladder to heaven anyway, really? And why, why does Christianity seem to have this so wrong? Why do they attach so many weird, um, unnatural beliefs to this. Uh, well, of course, it's because of the Bible, but interestingly enough, did you know some of the stuff in the Bible actually is real? It's just that it's actually written in green symbolism, um, but, and it's, but the problem is that people tend to take these things literally and really just completely screw it up. Um, I was going to start off by relating the story from ancient Egypt about Horus said, of course, Horus said uh, murdered Osiris. Okay. Hopefully, you'll follow my line of thinking here in a minute. Um, murdered Osiris, and then Isis gave birth to Horus the Avenger. A long, long struggle between Horus and Set. Uh, many people don't realize the Egyptians had said. Um, that eventual, eventually Horus would win the final battle and Osiris would return to Earth and bring with him his disciples. Now you've got to understand that this is all written in symbolism as well. Um, now let me go ahead and read you from this website here about Edgar Cayce's interpretation of the Bible and Edgar Cayce, a guy that I really admire myself, um, if you ever really research his work, you see that he predicted a lot of things very accurately, did a lot of cures, of course, for people uh, who had illnesses uh, that had previously been unheard of, and was just, did a lot of really, really, really great work, okay, and we're, we, I like to respect his actual work instead of making up silly things like a lot of the people who have read Edgar Cayce stuff, and now they just go kind of bad shit on the internet making up some stuff about aliens and all this and that and whatnot. <laughs> and some of them, by the way, also, uh, they act, try to act like they're better than, than you. They're, um, and that's the ego talking. And, and you should know that when the ego is talking, um, your ladder to heaven, if you will, is actually getting derailed like a train right off the track and you're going right back down. So, that's not good. Um, let's talk about what Edgar Cayce actually did say here, and what he said about the Bible, actually. Of course, you may realize uh, he was brought up Christian, so any information that he even received psychically was filtered through his mind, and he would, he would interpret, he would tend to interpret things in, uh, from a Christian standpoint, but not from a really bad Christian standpoint, but from actually trying to understand uh, what's really going on in the spiritual world. Okay, um, now it, it does stay here on this website that I'm looking at, because I was researching some of this. Um, da -da 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 let me get to the part I was actually going to read here. That would be nice. Okay, according to Casey, the Bible is the symbolic account of the fall of the human soul from its divine origin, as symbolically described in the book of Genesis and restoration of the human soul to heaven, as symbolically described in the book of Revelation. <laughs> um, in other words, Genesis is the symbolic testimony of his humanity's fall from heaven and paradise lost. Revelation is the symbolic testimony of humanity's restoration to heaven and paradise regained. Okay. Now, if you go back to what I said, when I started with the story of the struggle of Horus and Set and then Osiris was returned to Earth, this is actually the exact same story. Told in completely different symbolism, but it's the exact same story. Uh, Osiris, of course, representing the Christ consciousness. Um, Horus, 
uh, kind of a two worlds, uh, basically in the heavens and on earth, uh, taking the place of Osiris in the battle against Set, Set representing um, greed, selfishness, and all the ego-driven desires of people on earth, and that's the exact same thing, oddly enough, that Satan represents in um, these Bible stories. Okay? Ha! Did you know that? Some of you might have known that, some of you might not have known that. Um, but it's interesting because a lot of the dream symbolism here, now we're talking about, like, uh, specifically John on the West Side for some reason, and how he wrote so many things. There were so many things about the um, seven churches, seven candles, uh, seven seals. Now, the seven seals, as Casey explained, actually represent the seven chakras in the body. Um, and of course, when you're talking about uh, where he sees a, a guy on a throne with a white beard, uh, this represents your higher self, your higher consciousness. Okay, so it's actually simple enough. See, the thing is, when you take these stories, literally, they sound ridiculous, or they just sound like imaginary stuff, but when you understand that they're dream symbolism, and to read what Edgar Casey actually said about them, um, the interpretation, that all actually makes perfect sense, and it, it goes along perfectly with the Eastern mysticism also. Um, and it's interesting how you can find these similarities all over the world. If you ever look, sometimes you can draw a line. You can draw a direct line, a parallel between uh, this religion, the way it started out anyway, and uh, the Eastern mysticism and the ancient Egyptian religion, um, all relating similar information. Now I was going to do something silly here, just to be funny, basically. Um, let me get to this part I was going to read. Okay, we've got. Not that part. Not that. Well, okay, let's read this. Okay. Here's one of these visions we're talking about. Um, literal meaning. <laughs> John sees a woman with 12 stars about to bear a child. Next to the woman is a dragon that's ready to devour the child she has given birth to. After the child is born, the child is taken to the throne of God. This is from the Bible, of course. If you didn't know. <laughs> Excuse me. Afterward, a war in heaven occurs, and the devil and his angels are cast out of heaven to earth. John also sees a beast rise out of the sea, which the world worships. John then sees a man and the earth and angels proclaiming the fall of Babylon. Okay, uh, if you take this literally, you're going to sound like a mental patient, okay? You really think this is the story of a woman who was giving birth to a child and a, a dragon was actually about to eat the baby and all this stuff was actually going on, then you're insane. Okay, let me read you Edgar Casey's interpretation really fast, um, and you'll start to see something. Okay, he says, John is shown a picture, pictures of the soul of humanity and its development since the days of eternity. The woman symbolizes the soul of humanity crowned with 12 stars. The 12 stars represent the 12 basic patterns of the human personality as described in the zodiac. Okay, the child she bears is the conscious mind. As the conscious mind is born, a rival force of the self occurs, which brings about recurring periods of rebellion in humanity. Through divine intervention, the conscious... Oops, I'm sorry, I got distracted. I thought my phone was about to go down time. Um, the conscious mind is protected, while the unconscious mind, from which it sprung, is withdrawn below the conscious level. This is the same story symbolized as the fall of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Rebellion from the physical brings conflict into the soul, but the soul can remain above it by remaining concealed from the forces of self-will. Okay. When you read that, that now it actually all makes sense. That's perfectly clear. Seven chakras, um, the soul, um, the fall the fall of humanity to into the earthly realm and having struggles and problems. Now it, it all makes sense. At least it does to me. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and um, paste this website 
in the description below so you can all take a look at it if you want. I think it's some pretty fascinating stuff and it, uh, it relates a story that seems to be universal among, you know, many, many, many ancient religions and traditions on earth. Uh, so check that out. I'm James Otten. I'll be back um, in a week or two. Uh, maybe a week if I'm feeling inspired and bringing you another video, another awesome video. If this is, if it, excuse me. <laughs> if this is your first time watching me, uh, please do hit the subscribe button below. And that's it. You all have a great day. Blessed be. I'll catch you on the flip side.